it's it's a uh, I think it's a it's funny to me, but it's a sad thing to think of this as a as a Nintendo. If you're a Nintendo fanboy fangirl and you love Pokemon, to look at this game <laughs> and understand that even in the future of Pokemon, it won't look this good. It just won't. Right, because they don't right? bother updating anything because you know why? They had no competition. Hello and welcome to level 95 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here with two of my compadres. Of course, I have David. What up? And I have Corey. David, I'm I'm kind of mesmerized. I've never noticed. What's in the background? It's new. I noticed it too, and it's new. I, I know. What is this? What? In the it's background, shaking. you have a mask or some kind of some kind of faced thing holding, holding a phone. A phone? Oh, you guys, you guys can see that. Yes, yeah. we can see that. We have no. eyes. Well, the the face mask is from Titanfall. Uh, pilot pilot helmet, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that looks familiar. Okay. What's That's shaking neat. the phone. It is a Pokemon Go walker. Oh boy! Wow. Hey, in my defense, I did not buy it. I bought it. I I bought it. I got it as it. a present. Okay. I would I would have never bought that. <laughs> okay. Okay. But if okay. you got it, use it. If you got it, use it. Fair <laughs> enough. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Ladies, and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens. We welcome you. We welcome you in to level ninety-five of the pod. Uh, we got a good one. Because it's a single subject that we are all strangely passionate about. In fact, if I can give a clue, the world is currently passionate. Oh, about. Uh, so oh, well, but mm, okay, but yeah, yeah. How are how are you? How are you, both of you doing this fine evening? Doing good. Yeah, doing excited right. to talk about. Excited to talk with my pals about this. Dang game. it! I was gonna say that. Hey. See, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep. That's uh, another clue right there. Fairly obvious, I feel like. Yeah, of course. So with that, let's start with what we're playing. Um, I can go first because I do have a couple of games I've been playing, but one we're going to talk about later. The other one I can talk about that I have been playing um, is Valheim. I've uh, really? still been playing that putting a ton of hours i think if i checked it's close to like 12 or 14 hours over the past couple of weeks if i checked my steam which for me is like a good bit of time uh, because i don't have a lot of time to play depending on how work's going and it's pretty busy right now so not a lot of hours there but that is what i've been playing pretty much solely what i've been playing um yeah it's and it's it's as fun as before i've i've fatigued on it a little bit because i've played so much of it but Mm -hmm. I'm always down to maybe jump in there for at least a couple of hours and just mess around and build stuff. It's once again, I'm getting carried away with building things too much and over engineering. You know, I built a whole launch port dock, almost like area for boats. Um, we've got a couple of boats there and we're, you know, little Navy going, you know, we're Vikings or they're seafaring people. You got to be able to navigate and conquer the sea. So we haven't done that yet. Cause the Kraken is still there. And that like one, I hits was going to say, eaten yet no i don't i think the last if i remember the last we got ate by the kraken when we played it the one time i did by myself yeah we were we were just exploring the wilderness all three of us but didn't we get on a raft and try to sail i don't remember we definitely did do that i don't know if we got eaten though we just we 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 didn't have like the ability to easily fare the sea so we got out and then we tried to come back, and it took us like a half hour just to get back to the shore. Yeah, yeah, wrapped very slow. We have some. Right. I have I have some faster vessels in my in my fleet now, so that's a that's good pretty thing, cool. But, that's pretty cool. Yeah, have that's, you that's, beaten any more of the bosses? Um, let's see. Beat Eichther. Beat the second boss. I forgot that dude's name. Um, so I have to get. I have to go to the third boss. Is we'll have to beat now. Uh, but I, I finally so progressed. Right where I was. <laughs> I finally progressed past. Or I've only I've progressed into the swamps, so I've been to the swamps. Oh, that's where I died last. Yeah, and that's where my box is at. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, that's that's the next place I got to navigate. 
Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. They update an update they had that I didn't realize before is that they actually um, will tell you the days which day that you like died on, and that will stay marked on your map, just in case you ever want to go back to it and visit it. Which I think before it was if you died and then died again, your previous death marker got deleted, mm. and it was just your most recent one that showed up. But it'll show every time you died. So I have the first time I died when I got attacked by a bunch of boars, I got overran by them. <laughs> Didn't see them coming. And that death, and then my second death when I accidentally jumped from too high a height building my dock and died on my dock. So I have both those saved on my map. That's pretty much been it, though. Okay, I'll, I'll jump in next if that's cool. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I did. I did complete a game. Uh, actually, two, I guess. Both these games I've completed. But this one, you guys know about. The next one, you don't have any clue about. But uh, I went back to Super Mario RPG. Um, it turns out I was only a half hour away from finish when I had last put it down. And I stopped really? playing for like for like three weeks. I don't know why. It just <laughs> didn't pop up in my queue. So I uh, popped it up a couple days ago and, and finished the last couple boss fights. It's almost like a gauntlet. You know, you go through this big castle and you you fight a couple of the previous bosses and a couple tougher enemies but yeah game was fantastic loved it i i, I really did enjoy myself with that game it was just like i had mentioned before so full of personality with the characters the bowsers the peaches the marios you know that you don't normally see them interacting like that so i, I had a great time with that and i'm on board for uh, uh whatever the remake is i think it's the n64 one so okay. thousand thousand year door maybe I think that's the mm -hmm. uh, one they're remaking. I know it's Paper Mario instead of like the style, but yeah, very excited for that one coming up. And uh, the play date, I'd mentioned the play date the last couple times I was, yeah. the last time I was on there. And I told you that it does like a season thing where every couple weeks they give you, or every week they'll give you two, two games as yeah. part of your library. So um, I have four games. Three of them were kind of like, yeah, play it for five minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, put that down. But there was a game on there called Pick, Pack, Pup. Pick Pack Pup. You are a, a doggo. Okay. You are a doggo um, sorting packages for a company, like an evil overlord company. <laughs> and it's a it's a match three game, right? Which there's a they're dime a dozen. Match three mm -hmm. games are all over the place. And it's like maybe like Yoshi's Cookie, I guess, where you're like moving things around on the screen to be able to attach them. And then mm -hmm. once you attach them, they become a package. And then you can get as many packages as you want on the screen, and then you send them all out at the same time. Yeah. So you want to try to get as many of these match threes as you can to get, like, bonus points as you send them. It's not get a match three, it disappears. No, it, it kind of, like, uh, takes up the screen, and it doesn't, like, go away until you send it away. So uh, it had a little story mode on there. I would say it was, like, three, four hours. I beat that in, like, two days. I was, I was really into this game. They did it oh. really fun. It wasn't just match three. It was... It, it had a whole bunch of challenges with it. It was, you can only ship sunglasses. You can only do this. Hey, instead of matching three, you got to match. It was almost puzzle-like in some of the regards where it's like, hey, you got to make a package that's seven. You've got to make uh, three different packages that are five. Uh, you know, you're playing around with, like, the movement of it and trying to figure out the puzzle for that. So mm -hmm. story story was, was pretty good for that little package. You know, like I said, the dog is under an overlord, and they eventually you go to outer space. And it's it was fun. Like, I had a really, really good time. And that was a game on there where I'm like, yeah, this was – this was a, a top-notch game, like something that you would recommend to somebody uh, if they had the council. And obviously, if they have the council, they're going to get it anyways because it's part of that season. But yeah. tons of fun. Pick, pack, pup. And I don't think you can play it anywhere else. Maybe it's on PC because a lot of those games kind of have like a cross thing where it's like, you know, you can download it on itch.io. But and that was fun. Those were the two games I've uh, played, plus a third that we're going to talk about. So going to space out of nowhere, huh? Yeah, yeah. Very, Eventually, very Final Fantasy 16 vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You were building robots. Like I said, it started off real simple. Ah, build up, you know, pack these sunglasses and beach towels, and then build these mm -hmm. robots, and then outer space. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we know where I'm going. I'm mm -hmm. playing a lot of uh, Apex and Overwatch. I still can't get out of Diamond Four. It's you know, you win the five matches, and then it places you. 
and it keeps just going diamond four. Oh, I'm 80% higher. Oh, I'm 16% higher. I'm 90%. It just keeps going back and forth, and I'm tired of it. They said they were getting rid of that. I thought it was this season, but I guess it's next season. We will see. But mm-hmm. I did download Hellblade because I played it on Game Pass last time. So I might get into that and play it and beat it again before the new one comes out. Mm. You just bought it on. You just bought it on Steam, like just regular. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you're gonna give it another a second go. Yeah, I figured why not? You know, just to get refresh re, yourself, uh, reaccompanied with with Sauna and get the feel for the game again. And her so sacrifice. that way, I'm even more pumped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, I, yeah, that's it. That's what I've been. Uh, that's what mm-hmm. I've been playing. What What is this other game you guys have been playing? It's hopefully a game that you'll be playing next time we talk. That's yeah. possibly. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I guess that's leading us to our main topic of discussion here. Is that I said, we've been playing it. Two out of the three of us, we're trying to get a third. But the whole world has been playing it. And that is, of course, Pal World. Also known as Pokemon with Guns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, uh <laughs> Kind of has its origins. It seemed kind of like a meme game, like this game is for jokes. Um, and then the developer basically kind of effed around and made a pretty good game that's yeah. fairly well optimized um, and 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 plays really well. So, yeah, I guess we all have a, kind of like some different like approaches for talking about this game uh, as far as how we want to talk about it. Um, who really wants to? Do we want to do that? Maybe do we set up and just define it actually what this game is? Just giving a brief yeah, let's, overview let's, of what it let's is. Let's talk. Let's talk about it a little bit. Talk about you know we're playing it. David has a, a topic related to that that can yeah. kind of like uh, put off, off of that. But let's let's talk about our enjoyment okay. of the game or lack therefore of you know whatever they call it. But yeah. uh, Jeremy, you liking it? Uh, yeah. So so I'll give a, a brief overview for those yeah. that don't know. Power World is a basically a survival game. Uh, if you think about games like Ark. If you think about games like Valheim that I've been playing, a bunch of other games like Rust, certain things like that, uh, it has those base mechanics where you're, you know, forging, gathering resources, building bases and all these other things, researching technology, weapons and all that stuff. But the addition is that the world is inhabited by these animals called pals. And these pals kind of look like Pokemon. There's a (laughs) little bit of a, it's a little bit of a whole tizzy about that. Um, and obviously like Pokemon, they all have different elements that they're attached to and those elements and the type of pals they are, uh, enable you. Not only can you catch them, you can catch them so you can, you know, yeah, it has, it, they don't call them Pokeballs. They call them pal spheres you get mm-hmm. toss them to capture them. And from there you can, you know, use them to fight in the world, the fight off a poaching ring, uh, which is the main antagonist of the game, or you can use them at your base to accomplish different tasks. If you want to do farming for you or grazing, so you can collect wool to create cloth, all these different types of things. And as you level up your base and level up yourself, you can level up your pals and your pals can do more things. That's the essentials of what the game is. And the hopes is that as you're progressing and leveling up, you're going against bigger and badder bosses to try to help the pals. Um, The difference, I think kind of one of the differences that I've seen kind of in the comments and all that is that the pals, obviously you can capture them. You can leave them be, or you can whack them. (laughs) Okay. And it's not a matter of, it's not like Pokemon where, Oh, they fainted. No, you bodied them. Okay. It's a little diff. It's just a little diff. Um, so yeah, I've played, I think I've said, I probably put about a little bit over six hours into this game. Um, this game feels like it's, it's taking over my interest of Valheim because it's scratching a lot of those itches, but it also has Pokemon, essentially. Pals will help you out, copyright, but essentially has all those things. Um, so yeah, it's it's really cool. I've always liked survival games. Obviously, Valheim, I put tons of hours in the Ark, and Ark is like terribly optimized. This game runs really well. <laughs> um, the other day, I was actually able to play it while also rendering a a video upload of our latest uh um podcast episode and so it chugged but it didn't chug as much as i thought it would chug 
So, I mean, this this thing is well. They're constantly doing updates. There's been a little bit of a tizzy about how it works on Xbox, but it's been good, and I've been I've been having a pretty a pretty good time in it. Leveling up, learning the systems, capturing the pals, being able to unlock different things you can do. You can ride the pals if you want, like Ark. Ark, you could catch, you could tame dinosaurs and ride dinosaurs. You're able to, you know, capture these pals, and then you can eventually like I got a deer, Aether deer, that I ride. I just caught a Nightwing, which is a big bird. I'm gonna get the Nightwing saddle so I can fly this bird around. I mean, there's different things you can do. It's super cool. So that's that's been my experience with it so far. Uh, just really enjoying it. Yeah, I don't have quite as many hours as you do, but I am playing on an Xbox, and so far it's it, it's run very smoothly. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the environments look pretty ugly, you know, when you go up when you're climbing up a rock cliff. But yeah. I don't mind that kind of stuff too much. Um, it's hitting all the right all the right notes right now for me. Uh, it feels like almost like my perfect game at this point obviously the game isn't perfect but what i'm looking for you know i'm yeah I, i'm sick right. of pokemon as you guys know and it's getting compared to yeah. pokemon a <laughs> ton mm-hmm. but um as we discussed pre-show i feel like this is definitely way more survival game and mm-hmm. hey let's throw in these creatures and that's the little like gimmick but it's not just a gimmick it's it's a huge portion of it and it's mm-hmm. and it's really really well done now yeah and the creatures themselves look great i've heard a lot of they stuff do. about david we'll get into this a little bit more about them ripping off pokemon but i've really enjoyed the creatures jeremy you said you can put them to work they can they can be your slaves not just like yeah. you guys aren't partners it's like you you will have to go to work you have to <laughs> yeah. do this and, and and i always love that about survival games now i usually don't get as far as I want to in survival games where I can like automate everything. Cause that almost mm-hmm. feels like an, an end game goal, right? Like, right. Hey, you've made it to where everything has just done itself. This is, this is doing this right away. Yeah. Um, it's part I'm of three the hours in, mechanic. Yeah. And they're, they're farming, they're building, they're mm-hmm. nonstop collecting for me. They don't ask for much. I gave them a little feeding area. I gave them some beds and they're, and they're happy. They've been happy yeah. so far Yeah, and it's great. And I love, love, love that, each of them have different attributes to them. I don't know if you've been checking that out, Jeremy, but you know, it's like uh, one was like cowardly and it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, he has less attack. And one was like hard worker. And it's like in your camp, if you assign them to your camp, they will do things 30% quicker. Right. It's like, cool. Now I have a little bit of like ability to decide which of these pals do I want to take with me? Cause I believe you can take five with you and have one out at a time. So you can switch between them. Um, and it, it's Pokemon in the regard of they have different elements, different types of attacks and stuff like that. But you mm-hmm. also, for your base camp, um, can keep a, a decent number. Yeah. Right now I have six, which, like I said, I'm very early on, Jeremy. How many do you know how many you have at this I point? Think I'm, I think I'm up to nine, either nine or I think yeah, I'm thinking with nine or ten. OK, because so once cool. you yeah. level up to some point, you can get you have to level. You have to basically get these achievements that allow you to level up your base and then once that's happened you can you know have more more pals essentially that do stuff right yeah yeah so it's like it's a nice little drip feed of you know hey here's this new reward all you got to do is build a couple things you Mm -hmm. know so i built the statue i built this other workbench and i I, I was able to put another pal out there so um it it definitely feeds into the not just catching one of each type of pal because like Again, in Pokemon, you usually just want to catch like one. There's really not that much of a right. point to catch multiple. But here, you know, like I've been, I've been having my sheep. I got like six sheep in my camp, led by one cat. You know, land balls. I, he's the leader. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. land balls. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're good. They work good. <laughs> they're pretty good. Few, right? and, and it's being led by a cativa, a cat, a cativa. Yeah, oh, this guy knows it. Do this guy a, knows it. Do you have a pingulet net yet? Is that do a penguin-looking a, one? I don't. Yeah, the blue one. So let me tell you. No. So. Not only is he imp- so you mentioned the, the the element part, like Pokemon, the elements are important for fighting, right? Like, right. Like there's the 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 Gramos ones or whatever, which are the the leaf ones. And so if you have a Fox Spark, that's a fire one. Just got him. You call yeah. Well, the cool thing with with a Fox Spark is that you can actually get a upgrade that allows you to wield a Fox Spark like a flamethrower. Yeah. So I I called Fox Spark out. Got them out, flame throwing, murders, <sighs> mowing them down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's also, but the, their elements, their differentiation in, uh, in elements is also important for your base because, like, when you're able to unlock a forge and you need to, you know, forge ore into ingots, mm. a fox bark 
you need that to do it. because they can do the king the kingling ability and they can forge it for you, right? So that's how you get it. Interesting. If you're if you're creating a farm, you need a gromos because they're they're leaf. They can seed the plants for you. You can and then you need a pingulate to water the plants for you. That is so interesting yeah. because I because like I said, I'm I'm two hours in, right? So yeah. very bare bones in. And I did, I planted my berry farm. I forget exactly mm-hmm. what it's called, but I'm like. I'm like, man, why aren't they doing this? You know, like I've got to seed it myself. And then I right. I added that that leaf poke leaf pal, the one that's like brown with like the leaf on its head. <laughs> yeah. He started he started seeding. I'm like, awesome. Yep. And then he got done and he ran away. I'm like, wow, yep. I gotta water it. So yep, that makes a ton it. of sense to me. So that's cool. So you have incentive to have a good variety. Um right. And then you also need a pal that can gather, which I believe the cat of a can gather. Yes. Because yeah, once okay. they're done harvesting. Someone's got to go gather the harvest. I mean, you got so all cool. these different things, right? Yeah. And they just so they cool. automate and do it themselves. Right. So it's to a point now where I did the berry farm, so that way they can have berries to eat. Yes. They're just every day. They just got stacks of berries they're putting in this little feed box. <laughs> I ain't got to worry about feeding them. I haven't thought about feeding them. I have to put more <laughs> thought into feeding myself. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. Yeah. 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 It's great. No, I'm I'm really loving that part. It's it's so interesting just to see them, and I I've been having good good fun with it you know the the sheep i think they're really good builders because yes. like I, I put anything down they like swarm it yep and yep. it's it, and it's it's quite the impact too you know there was a uh i don't know maybe the statue was like a minute you know like mm-hmm. i had to build it for a minute and who wants to stand there and hold x for a minute so i was there then the five sheep came along and it went from a minute to Descended. 45 to 30 to yeah. 10 yeah. Like, done in like five seconds this yeah. is great. This is great. So, like, just finding that out about the different pals being able to do different abilities is like cool. And my buddy who's playing it, he told me he caught like I, I guess like a, a legendary, I guess for what the game is calling a legendary type, mm-hmm. and it had all the base attributes. So oh, I believe okay. that one's able to do everything that you need in the base, which is which yeah. is great. And it's so cool that you know. They're not just again Pokemon comparison. Pokemon are used for battle. That's really all they're good for, right? These yeah. you can have Pokemon that like are pals that aren't strong, but they have a lot of of base abilities that kind of right. help you in that regard. Um, another thing I want to compare about Pokemon here is um, I don't I don't think there's evolutions at all. No. So I think there's 111 pals in this game, right? Mm-hmm. I think without evolution, that's actually a a positive thing, because with Pokemon saying the first game having 150, really, with all the evolutions, you're never using the baby forms. You're never using the medium forms. So you have maybe a a solid group of like 70 that are like viable Mm -hmm. in this game. I haven't seen even close to the majority of them, but it's like Mm -hmm. it seems like all of them serve their purpose. And that sheep isn't going to be rendered useless because it evolved into a higher sheep and I'll never want the smaller sheep again. So very cool. Very cool stuff so far. Yeah, the 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 angle of the evolution is that though they don't evolve, you can breed. And okay. And so there's a couple of things that with this that kind of goes against the 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 conceit of Pokemon a little bit. Um like you were saying before, in Pokemon games, the Pokemon battle, that's all they do. Right. But in the lore of the show and of the world and other things in that mythology, the Pokemon do other things. Right. Right. Like the Pokemon do use their fire abilities to maybe like like you know, forge or or do something like that. They do do that. They just we can't do them in the games because Game Freak is incredibly lazy and they don't want to innovate <laughs> any of these things, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is, yeah, though they don't evolve. You can breed in Pokemon. You can breed, let's say, uh, a, a Clefairy with a Clefairy, right? Mm-hmm. That's how it works. Not in Pals. In Pals, you'll be able to breed a Fox Bark with an Ichthyrdeer and come up with a completely different variation that has different appearance and different abilities. Really? Yeah, that's 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 the, the expansion that's that this game offers. I know, 100%. Now, wow. is it a little icky feeling? Yeah, because I'm, you know... <laughs> I'm tossing maybe this little pal in there and I got him cross beaten with a big pal and that big pal is going to give it to him something fierce and that just feels uncomfortable. <laughs> but it's it's a mechanic of the game. We're going to use it. We're going to see what kind of new pal it, it produces and how I can put it to work or use it to kill others. Yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's just, it, it's such a funny concept. Like, uh, it's all over TikTok right now. It's all over yeah. everywhere. You've seen everywhere. this game, but it's just, 
like the, the the pals being used as slaves. Slavery is not funny. Pal slavery is a little funny. It is. It's a little funny because they pop up funnier. like. What's that? Putting one of the pals in a rocket launcher. Is, yeah. that, is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds I've great. I've seen one of that the videos. Great. It just I think it's, I think it's actually the, the, the pingolet. I think it's the yeah, pingolet. Oh, really? pingolet. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love that almost in like a management sim type roller coaster tycoon, it'll pop up like their feelings. Like this pal is feeling overworked. Yeah. I'm sorry. You got to work uh, I mean, harder. I need right, I like, need my items, man. I got this I got pal one is hungry. Yeah, I got one from a one notice from one pal that said this pal is slacking off. I was like, what? Oh, that's like, not that's not acceptable. <laughs> that's not like, acceptable. Yeah, you know, but it's like you know what? I'm too busy. I gotta I gotta catch this big chicken because I got the little chickens, and I saw a big chicken that was sparkling. I'm like, I gotta go check this. I gotta get this big sparkly chicken. So I I can't deal with this right now. You work when you feel like working. But um, yeah, it's like I said, so 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 early on. So I haven't even explored, you know, a, a a smidgen of what this game offers. But it does have like not story per se, but it has goals, right? Like your goal yeah. is to take out the the leader of this tower. That was that's on my mission right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Have you yeah. have you done that? Have you done yep. that yet? Yep. How's that? Is that fun? Is that? It is. I mean, it's it's kind of like a a boss battle where it's like. You have to beat the boss in a certain amount of time in order to mm. accomplish a goal. I think it's like ten minutes or something. But the boss is is Grizzbolt, so it's the not it's the 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 right shoe rip off if you want to say it that way. Uh, the big yellow thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, that's yeah. when you got to go against. And again, like all the element stuff is important. I went in there with a crossbow and about forty or fifty arrows, shooting and and dodging and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, there's it's it's great. I went up recently against some of the thugs. That had pistols and rifles on them, so I got some of that ammo. But I'm gonna have to research how to make those weapons, and okay. then eventually, you know, I'll be able to go there. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting, man. It's really yeah, interesting. A you know, couple other things I like a lot about it is, um, obviously, usually you're leveling up your monsters, your pals, your Pokemon. Yes. You know, but right. you, you do level up your character in this as mm-hmm. well, and you get skills. You know, like I was doing stamina because it has a Breath of the Wild mechanic where you can climb up every single surface. Yep. You have a glider where you can glide off surfaces throughout mm-hmm. the world. Um, you have like the weight management, you know, because yep. you're you're collecting a lot of stuff. So uh, leveling up your own character is pretty fun. And I haven't got to level up any of my pals yet, but I do know as they level up, they unlock uh, more moves. Yeah. So. What I've experienced, your pals level up if you have them in your party. Okay. They level up as you also level up. So you guys, you all share experience. Gotcha. Um, and then they also get experience working at the base. Okay. But they get experience from from whatever you're doing. So when I'm going out there and I am just like going out there just riddling land balls with arrows, they're also getting experience <laughs> points for me doing that. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool mechanic. And then again, you're able to eventually unlock either items that allow you to ride or have certain bonuses for your pals. So like one pal, I don't know if you've run into the the little monkey pals yet. No, I have not. Um, but once you, you can capture those. And if you buy the, the pal upgrade for that, it gives them AK 47s. <laughs> so yeah. you just have, you just have like a, like a little, basically a little oh monkey my God. walking around with a chimpanzee, just shooting a little green. Monkey. Oh yeah. Like, oh, it's yeah crazy. I've seen that. One of the first TikToks I've seen was, your character going up to the green monkey that you had caught already, you yeah. know, it was already leveled up apparently, but then like petting it. And then the green monkey pulls out the Uzi and starts mowing down other pals. And I was like, this is, this is fantastic. Yeah. This is <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Um, a couple other quick points I want to make is now usually with survival games, my first goal is like, I want to build a really cool base. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been motivated by that yet, which is, which is me is a great thing. You know, usually it's like the base building is my number one priority. I want to see mm-hmm. how cool of a base I built. I, I don't know how in depth that is. It looks like some of the unlocks are decorative, which I always like a good variety, but I can't wait to kind of like settle down into an area and really build a nice looking base and, mm-hmm. and plantation and, and factory where, you know, my pals and myself can kind of like chill and do all that stuff. And yeah, right. And, and, and my final point real quick is it's early access. It's it's cheaper than a regular game. It's $30 right now, or it's on Game Pass if you want to play it that way. Mm-hmm. And from what I read, it says the developers say they're about 60% done. Yeah. Which, if they add another half to this entire game, you know, more pals, more missions, more everything, 
That's right. that speaks for a very a very successful future, and I'm very excited to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. There also is something that you guys haven't brought up yet, and what's majorly different from the game it's always being compared to is you can catch people. <laughs> yes. Is it is that like a like a is that's not a glitch is it or is it no it's this says this is morally wrong or whatever like it, it encourages you not to do it but you can catch other people yeah i saw an article about people i wish i forgot so to bad. do that's because so i got bad. i got caught up in the boss battle but i did see that there was a way for you to catch grisbolt and i think it's lena who's like the mm-hmm. like the or lena or something that's like the leader or whatever yeah that one um, is that one is definitely a glitch. Okay. Okay. Cool. The the collect the catching like the, the yeah. big the big leader poke uh pals. Mm-hmm. But the humans, I wasn't sure. That sounds like that's just a mechanic. And it's just like the people that are at what that I've are, gathered that are yeah. on the campfires. This is, is it? If this it's so is true, it's so interesting. It's so this interesting. True, this is this is this is earth shattering. I'm going to. I mean, I mean, it up yeah, to so make sure. yeah. You, you guys know I haven't played it yet, but I've seen right. a lot of videos on TikTok and Facebook and YouTube, and I've seen a couple of people catching people. Yeah, my buddy said he tried to catch a person, and then he got the co- the cops. The cops came on him. Really? And like, and that was his first death. Yeah, he got killed by him. Like they. I apparently... that I haven't seen anything about even having cops in that game. Well, I, I don't know if they're technically cop rangers, something like well, people you, came uh, like and hunted people them down. with a, a force of. But so, like the people you catch, what do you do? Catch with you them? people confirmed. So you catch you, the you people. You can do the same thing. They can do your whatever. You can chop yeah. them up. You can. That's called chop them. That's called. All right. So one, one. If you work them, that's that's slavery. <laughs> That's hey, slavery. Is it, video game. Like, let me let me tell you. So for one, it's a video game. And number two, is it more moral for us to enslave these land kind balls of, than us to of. enslave Jennifer? Uh, just Are you going to sit here and tell me that bit. Land Ball has less rights than Morgan? I mean, come <laughs> on. And, and, and another thing here, like you said, you can chop them up. What do you chop up things for in this game? In I don't know. To cook them. Yeah. So when you chop up, that's cannibalism. So we're looking yeah, at just, themes you just can't of slavery, cannibalism. Like this is, hey man, <sighs> listen, hey man, anything that anything that's got flesh has got a pork loin. Yeah. If you and don't, if you if gotta you eat you the brain, you, you will die. I don't know how your body knows you're eating another human's brain, <laughs> but as long as you don't do that, you're okay. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm. Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna catch me some fans. No, I can't even. I can't even say that. I'm I gonna catch me a person it. tonight. I'm gonna 100%. catch me some humans. Yeah, I'm gonna catch me some humans. Like <laughs> I know where two of them are right off rip. They're laying down there near campfires. They intro the game. They gave me some very nice items as a beginner. I'm about to say, can you what? catch merchants? You can catch merchants. Yeah, that's how you oh can make sure that you can God. that they stay where they are and you can easily access. Oh them. It's my. great. It's great. You yeah. are my merchant. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hunt us some people tonight. A hundred percent. Out of, out of context, hunting. that sounds terrible. <laughs> but it's in the context. It is the context. Our world. Our world. <sighs> it's fun. It's fun. It's, it, it's, it's a ripoff. It's a ripoff to some extent of Pokemon to every other survival but game. That it, is a, it is a close but approximation because it's not at all. It's so unique. Exactly. There's so many things we have nowadays like almost everything isn't even an, an original idea right, right at right. this point you know how many card games are there and how many rules overlap all those games yeah Just because like in this game there's animals and you can catch them oh my god it's it's a rip off of pokemon yeah, no, they, I, I'm not. I'm not mad at it. Thing. I'm not mad at it. I know you're not, but I, I'm a, glad a lot, they took that mechanic. A lot of people are mechanic. just like, "Oh, it's a ripoff yeah. of trying to make a couple bucks." Go ahead. Yeah, if you want to entire... start talking about this, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> genre of a game, like you guys said, it's a it's a open world like survival game. You know, there's right. not much of a story. You're not over. You're not out there trying to earn badges and. Isn't this genre the game called Creature Elite Catcher five? or something like that? The what? Isn't this genre of game called like Creature? It's like it's, hap- or, it's, like, it's happened it's, it's a, a lot. genre. Yeah. Monster Hunter did it. Uh Final Fantasy, World of Final Fantasy did it. Mm-hmm. Uh Monster Sanctuary. There's a t- it's just uh Tentem. 
yeah. there's a good handful of games that are solely based on creature collecting. And like I said, this one feels more survival than creature collecting, but yeah, uh, almost like 50 50. So I got right. no problem with it. Um, I mean, if I could be 100 percent honest here, I'm 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 glad. They ripped off Pokemon. They didn't rip them off, but I'm glad they did. I'm glad <laughs> everyone thinks they did. I'm glad people think that they stole designs. They stole mechanics. They they have close approximation to like the the Pokeballs and stuff. I'm mm-hmm. so happy because it shines a light right at the Pokemon company, right at Game Freak, right at Nintendo. That's yeah, what a game, lot of people were saying. This game has sold six million copies in, in five in days. Five days. Yep. Now that's not quite Pokemon numbers yet. But you can only imagine at the end of the year it being in the 10, 15, possibly 20 million it's one range. It's the top games on Steam ever. Yeah. It's not on PlayStation. It's not even on Switch yet. Those right. are the two, besides PC, those Xbox is small. This thing ain't coming to, to those Switch. Two. Yeah, <laughs> there's no way this thing is coming to Switch. I would not thing, have I, it. Nintendo at all. I, w- I would love Nintendo to try to stop it. Like, of course they can, but I would love for them to give a reason. Because, yeah. it's, because it's better than what you've put out. Mm-hmm, it lo- right. it already it already looks better than Scarlet and Violet. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. The mechanics are fresh. It's it's done some really good ideas with the collect uh, creature collecting that mm-hmm. Pokemon never tried to touch. Yeah. It would not be hard for Pokemon to add base building. You know, do something with like all the different environments with the wood and the stone, just like every other game does. And Pokemon yeah. doesn't do it. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that people think they copy Pokemon. And like to this game. It's not only innovating on on top of what Pokemon has done up to this point. It's also on innovating on what top of all, of all those survival games have done at this point too. Like this is a better survival game than Ark. This is a better survival game than Rust, at least in my opinion, right? Based on the fact that you can also with these pals automate so many things right. and you can focus on playing the game. Right. I don't have to now worry about feeding my pals because I've created a system of which they can feed themselves. Right. So that allows me to spend more time out exploring, thinking about different things, possibly building stuff. I can set up a a blueprint of maybe what I want to build or setting up something like a workbench or whatever. And I can leave and my land balls and my pingolet will build it while I'm going doing other stuff. Right. It allows me to, it it allows me to play the game more um, and not have to focus on maintaining things. So I think it, it deserves some credit there as much as like you were saying, people want to say, oh, it's conceit. It's that it's ripping off Pokemon and it's a it's a more interesting Pokemon. It's also a more interesting survival game. It it, it gets both of those angles. Yeah. And it doesn't um doesn't push the survival too hard. Um, no. There's a little bit of like uh, temperature effects, you know, at night. You kind of have to have you buy a fire, have like the right yeah. clothes, a little, little bit, bit of, of hunger. Eating. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't go so extreme where it's like water as well and mm-hmm. and the food has to be cooked or you know there's there's poisonous stuff or yeah. you know stuff like that. So you have a um, permanent debuff from hypothermia. It's like what? Right, right. <laughs> it's just a little chilly. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, so like it's not it's not too bad. It's would it have been okay to not even have that stuff? Probably. I think I don't think I anyone would have missed it, but. It's it's okay to have, you know, just to keep you kind of like uh, honest, you know, yeah. feed your feed your own character, clothe your character. So yeah, I'm definitely okay with that. Yeah, I also like that when the food, you know, the food has a certain amount of time that it's that it's good for. Okay, but I don't think that it turns into because I think of like another survival type game that I've also spent some time in, which I was thinking about going back to is Medieval Dynasty. Um, but games like I think I, I think in Ark and I think in Medieval Dynasty, when food reaches a point where it's done, it spoils and it turns into rot. Now, those games have uses for rot, um, mm. but it can be a little bit tedious. I'm glad with this game. It's like, hey, if you don't eat it in this certain time, it just goes away. It just goes okay. away. OK, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to I'm not, I'm not going to put another item in your limited inventory that you have to figure out what you're going to do. It just goes away. Yeah. Um. Just more of the survival mechanics, the tools, you know, tools kind of break down. It doesn't seem like they happen too, too quickly. Mm-hmm. And, and it's very easy to repair them. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things like, hey, it's a f- survival game. Uh, your tools are going to degrade and you have to repair them. And it, it doesn't seem like it costs too much. You definitely get a lot of use out of them before they degrade. 
Um, right. Man, there's, there's a lot to talk about. Like I said, I've only played two hours, and it feels like there's a ton to talk about for this game. Uh, I really enjoyed that your your pals can give you buffs when they're in your party. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was chopping wood down, and, you know, uh, it shows you how close you are to being over-encumbered or whatever it is. And I was at 400. I'm like, I thought I was only at 350. And it's like, oh, you got a 20% boost because of the one of the pals in your in your party. Yeah, it's like awesome. That's like really I can, cool. I can see myself setting up different parties depending on what my goals are. Exactly. For that That's day. what I was thinking I, as soon as you said that. Yeah. Right. Like, hey, this is my party where I, I I collect materials and I explore. This is my party when I just want to straight up fight. You know, it's just. It's very cool, and I can't wait to, like, really deep dive into it. And like I said, when I say it was, like, a perfect game at this time, it really feels like it. You know, I'm yeah. sure we can point out some negatives. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. I don't feel like I yeah, have any at this point. In, uh, it's so it's early in, what, Alpha me. or beta? Pre-whatever it's, it's called? It's, it's basically in beta, right? Yeah. Um, so, early yeah, access I'm, game preview. I'm sure there is something wrong with this game. Yeah, 100%. But that's, um, you know, it, that's what's going to come with it. If I if I want to give one criticism, which I guess is whatever, very limited character creation. I mean, you're oh, either yeah. a very attractive <laughs> anime woman or you're a very attractive anime male. There's not really I, a lot of, <laughs> of, of in between there. I was so surprised. Now, like you said, very attractive anime. Like I'm going through the faces, anime, 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 and then the <laughs> most chiseled person you've ever seen. It looked like perfect Squidward out of nowhere. Chiseled, yeah. hard features, sharp. <laughs> like, where did this come from? This is out of a different game. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. Very That's light funny. character customization. I I'm I'm really enjoying the fact that it's early access and I could have stuff to look forward to. You know? Yeah. Got in when it was 30 bucks. Yep. Uh there's no doubt in my mind that it probably has a value of 60. You know? This, so when yeah. they do get done adding everything, I'm going to feel like I got a deal right there. Yeah, that's one right. of the things I kind of talked about in the Thronefall review is if you get a good game that you know is like at the bones good and it's in early access and you come in at that lower price because you're willing to take a risk. If you can if you can get 10, 15, 20 hours of it, then once they've built it out, ideally, and they're at that 1.0 and they're ready for full release, there's going to be so much good content there that you're going to be like, wow, like. I, I, this is obviously worth my money. You know, I talked I'm about sure. it, Thronefall, 30 hours. It's obviously worth my $7. Uh, I'm know? sure with you, it was the same thing with like Software Inc. I don't, was that early oh, access yeah. when you bought it? Yeah, early access. Yeah. And it's like, think, I've got over 200 hours in that game, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they just, because it's early access, you know they were adding more stuff. So you always yeah. had, I'll jump back into this game, see what it's like, you know? Yeah. Like, I might play this game for 30, 40, 50 hours and then take a break and then find out they added new areas, new mechanics and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, Jump right wait, back in. wait until they up the uh, multiplayer count for console for Xbox. And yeah, that's, what's that now? Four? I think it's four. Two to four. four. Where Steam I think it's up to thirty two. Oh um, wow. But that's the other quick angle I want to kind of talk about with this game is asking the question of this. Right now this game is available for PC and Xbox. Is this a win for Xbox? Did Xbox yeah. score yeah. a AAA yeah. exclusive type win with this game? Is it AAA? I, it's not. No, but, but it just sold like, five million copies in five days. Indie. It's selling like AAA. This game, it is. If, if I if I'm understanding this correctly, based upon what we know, this game has sold more copies. And granted, it's half the price, maybe a little bit more than half the price. But this game has sold twice as many copies, or nearly twice as many copies as Final Fantasy 16 did. If I'm understanding yeah. it correctly, I think I think when it comes to console exclusive, even if it's bigger on the PC, it's always a win for whatever console has that game. Something like exactly. Baldur's Gate Three. Baldur's Gate Three was a this is a win for PlayStation, mm-hmm. and it was because at first it was only on PlayStation for like a couple yep. months. Just like this is a huge win for Xbox. You know, 100%. this feels like hey, only place to play Pal World is is on Xbox. You know, if you don't have a PC. And I'm sure it has most of its sales on PC, but at the end of the day, it's still like Sony, Nintendo, X, Microsoft, only Microsoft yeah, but has if it. If you're a console player, if you're a console gamer, Xbox is where you grab it, right? And the great thing about that is, is that whether you're playing on Steam, I think whether you're playing on Steam or Game Pass or Xbox, I think there's cross compatibility. I know there's Xbox cross compatibility. So if I'm playing on Game Pass on PC, I can play with someone on Xbox. Yeah, um, I think um, I, I was trying to play with my friend. It's 
it's um, Xbox and Microsoft, you know, Steam on PC are compatible, but not with Steam yet. But okay. that was on the roadmap that they wanted to get. It was like one of their first goals. They wanted yeah. to get full cross-platform. Yeah. I mean, that's such a win. I I think when we were looking, we did a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about what it's 2024 looking like for some of these you know, we mentioned Xbox and Microsoft, and we're like, what do we think the wins are going to be? We think Hellblade is going to be a win. Hit. Right. Such, Such a, a surprise. surprise it's hit. just out of Such the left surprise. field. Yeah. And it does, and, and you know, you'd mentioned, uh, David, about the Pokemon comparisons, ripoffs, maybe. Um, it, it almost feels a little bit like sour grapes. Like, right. like, wh- like, why do people care if it ripped off Pokemon? Like, yeah, and they, like, they have no competition. They and, and, I, I, and I'm about to say, I think the reason why is because. People that love Pokemon are sick of Pokemon. Which Pokemon is this? Sick, yeah. Right, like, like Pokemon should rip this off. Yeah, like, like that. Like us. that first boss, it shouldn't be riding a Grizzbolt. It should be riding a Raichu, yeah. but it's not. I, yeah, and it just <laughs> it probably from the Nintendo crowd, which I am one of them. It probably feels pretty bad, you know, that yeah. finally someone came along and innovated on a very, very dated creature collecting system where it was feeling very stale. You know, I yeah. Oh no, I was just gonna say I I'm a huge fan of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, I still think it's a great game, and this feels like what that sequel would feel like. <laughs> like I feel like yeah. I'm playing the sequel to Legends Arceus. Like oh, this is great. You know, this is awesome. It's it's a uh, I think it's a it's funny to me, but it's a sad thing to think of this as a as an attend of your Nintendo fanboy fangirl and you love Pokemon to look at this game and understand <laughs> that even in the future of Pokemon, it won't look this good. It just I, won't. Right. Because they don't right? bother updating anything because you know why they had no competition. It's yeah. like the freaking uh, sports games. No one's in competition with each other over there. Exactly. They're just releasing the same stuff. But now it's like, oh, crap. Yeah. yeah, this is tough. We have to I'm, do I'm, something now. I'm trying to think of an example right now where someone like just came and ate someone else's lunch, you know, like this, this is Pal World. Well, I feel I'm, like has has a lot I'm, of love compared to Pokemon. Like, yeah, like Xbox hasn't like made a God of War that was better than God of War. No, you Xbox's know, like, Xbox's God of War response is Hellblade. Yeah, that's what that's what they're kind of okay. open. And look, it's not going to be that, but that's what they're expecting on a smaller scale. It, I think I, I don't know if they want that. It's not going to be as big. But what I what I was going to say was what what the 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 best path forward for Pokemon is the same with David's beloved Resident Evil. Look, we were doing it great, and then other people came and ate our lunch because they innovated. So then we guess what we're doing? We're coming back, and we're still in everything they did. We're still in all I mean, their innovation. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> tough though because I feel like it happened to Resident Evil a lot earlier than Pokemon. You know, probably as early as like the PlayStation Two, with like the Silent Hills of the world and stuff, right? Yeah. So like Pokemon hasn't yeah, had this I mean, happen to them in, in thirty horror years. On PlayStation so. itself. Yeah, but this is it because it look like I said, Pokemon's not going to look as good as this. And no. any 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 kind of any kind of survival more survival mechanics or abilities to utilize Pokemon for different things like work or whatever. All those things, if they add them to games, which is things people that that love Pokemon have been wanting. When they add them to them get to their games, Pal they're going to say off. you took it from Power World, though, huh? You had to steal from Power World because you didn't do this it. Is, if I listen, if I was Microsoft, I'd buy, I'd buy this company. Yeah, I would they make probably this. Are. I would it's make probably this already like, under the deal. I would make this a huge franchise. Yeah, you know, if you give this it's company a, a boatload of money, yeah. this could, I honestly believe, it could compete with Pokemon. Start making mangas. Which start is, just building lore <laughs> around it. Build this thing into something. Right at the end of the day, Pokemon is so trapped by its by its everything. Mm-hmm. You know, their excuse has always been, "Hey, we have cards to come out and we have a show to come out, so we can't put the time into making a game because this game has to be out within the year or two. Now, that's a sorry excuse because they're a big enough company to hire three teams and start working on a game six years before the show ever airs. So yeah. that's not a good excuse, but. I, I really hope this shows. I, I hope Nintendo has to comment on it. You know, yeah. I hope they do. I hope. I hope they try to take a step towards something. You know, because it'll it'll be frowned upon big time. Well, from what I gather, I haven't looked deep into it, but apparently Nintendo has tried to sue them and shut them down, but they have no off of this game or to stand on off Pal because, World, Yeah, 
Okay, because they yeah. made they made another previous game called Craftopia. I've, I've never played that. But that apparently was a, a Breath of the Wild ripoff <laughs> with yeah. the whole glider, open world, boblikins, like the whole thing. So, so yeah, is the company a, a little bit skeezy? It seems like they take well, great inspiration. Yeah, let's say maybe the company doesn't have a bunch of really, really original ideas, but they know how to uplift previous work all right that's a skill i, that I would say only six million copies sold i would right. say as long as you're not stealing assets yeah then you let the work speak for itself if if you're going to make a clone and it's worse no one's going to play the clone no one would no one they Never. would play the original that was better you know like yep. nintendo could make a halo uh clone and if it's not better than halo no one's going to play it this company yeah they, they clone pokemon a little bit you know but they they mm-hmm. Spliced it with a little bit of different DNA, and it turns into a Frankenstein sort of thing that that's fun. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, and again, are we going to sit there and act like Nintendo hasn't taken some wild inspiration from some competition in previous games? You know, yeah. You draw, you draw inspiration from where you can. Um, of course. Yeah, Power World. Um, it's uh, David. Yeah, David. Did we do we do we do enough here? Did we convince you? Mm. Um, maybe. <laughs> After all of that, we talked for like forty five minutes. I know. Listen, listen. Can you, so, can, you give us a, can you give us a percentage? I mean, it's it's probably it's made on like sixty seventy. I thought he was gonna say fifty. Uh, <laughs> okay, but, sixty seventy. So that's good. I'll take that. I'll take that. Mm-hmm. It's not your type of game with the open world. I understand that, but yeah, that's the only problem. But if you did like Valheim, I feel like this is is very comparable to it in terms of of fun. Yeah, you know, I I played Seven Days to Die. I played Art. I it felt like those were very complicated, very menu heavy, very like small small things Extremely that you had to grindy. worry about. Where Valheim, I think the positive about that was, man, I'm just chopping some wood. I'm just hitting some stone. Once I got that, now I can build my base. That was fun. It was simple enough with mm-hmm. some depth. This feels pretty similar to that. You know, you unlock some stuff with some tech points and you're just you're building stuff and you're always getting rewarded. And bonus, you're you're catching Pokemon. Mm-hmm. 100%. And, and unlike Arceus. You ain't gotta catch thirty of the same ones. You can catch ten at the same time. <laughs> that was fun. Same kind to get an experience boost. Yeah, really enjoying it. Power World's great. Everyone, I say at least check it out. If you've got Game Pass already, give it a try. Um, and if you can get the what is it, fifteen day trial for a dollar, if you're really interested, you can check it out that way if you want. Um, also, Power World actually does just literally have a trial. Oh, does it? It does. It does. It, it does. And when I clicked it, it just bought it. So I don't know how good that trial is. Try doesn't sound like it worked then. Because I didn't know if I wanted to buy it or get it on Game Pass. So I'm yeah. like, let me just download the trial. And then my PayPal notified me I spent $31. I'm like, PayPal? What did, what did I buy off PayPal? And apparently my PayPal's connected to my Microsoft account. I don't know how that happened. Anyways, be careful <laughs> with the trial. It might purchase it for you, but it does say it has a trial. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess maybe investigate that carefully cautiously right right yeah. um if we're, if we're done talking power world you can move into game time let's do it all right this game time is of course we're bringing back one game it's we did it one time before but it was actually <laughs> we enjoyed it we want to do more of it just had to find the topic of name that game i think i'm that's so happy i'm it. pumped uh name that game of course is where p- contestants have to we have to name a game, but we're only given a certain amount of information. Maybe it's the name of a level. Someone yeah. says the name of a level. We have to guess what game that's from. Right? Uh, for this rendition, I'm going to be, I guess, hosting it. And um, okay. this is going to be side characters. Ooh, so I I'm going this. to name side characters. I think I'm taking the sweep on this one, David. I'm so sorry. What is it best of or whatever? How many questions? We um, got? I believe I did seven. Seven? All right, I only need four to win. Got it. Oh, okay, wow. Wow, this guy's confident. <laughs> and you just weren't? Uh, I was. Is this just first <laughs> first come, first serve, right? Whoever can spit it out their mouth the quickest? Whoever can think of, whoever can correctly guess the game wow, first. Wow, you spit? <laughs> Bad rhymes. Mm. Oh, okay. yep. no. 
No, I don't. All righty. <laughs> Are we ready to go on this? As I'm ready. Be. All right. The first side character, Raiden. Mortal Kombat. No, 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 Metal Gear Solid. Correct, Metal Gear Solid. Okay. Ooh, nice. It was Mortal Kombat was a Raiden too. in that game. All right. Um, the next character. Clean sweep. Dollface. For the metal. Ooh. Got it. Not a clean sweep. <laughs> If, after saying clean sweep, <laughs> immediately having it not be a clean sweep. Got swept. The quick kiss. Oh, um, all right, next character. Tommy. Uh, GTA 4. GTA Vice City. GTA, GTA 3. 3. Incorrect. GTA 5. Tommy. Incorrect. Tommy Vercenti. Oh no no! The Last of Us. Oh my God! The Last Jeremy, of Us. Jeremy oh, is wait, that was the to... last name. No, what? I just said, no. There was no last name. I said the last name. Oh well, okay. Jeremy wow, is trying to feed that. you some wins, dude. He's I don't no, I don't think Twisted so. Twisted Metal and The Last of Us. Okay, Metal Gear Solid. Oh, that's neither of us. It's you, if anything. All righty. <laughs> Get out of here. Next character. Two to, two to one. Two to one. Mm-hmm. Dog meat. Fallout. Okay, where, 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 whose mouth was that feeding? Uh, I don't, I've never played Fallout before. I don't know what you're talking about. Nah, you couldn't have answered any faster. <laughs> okay. So we've got. Three to one. Yep. So Corey gets the next one. He gets it. But I have I have confidence in David. Next one. Ethan Winters. Resident Evil. Evil. <laughs> seven. <laughs> That's eight. And, well, it's He's seven, in eight, seven. Eight. He's a main character, isn't he? Yeah. And kind of ish, yeah. I mean, we got it, right? Are you waiting for us to. I, I can't. Oh, he was I'm the main character in Village. I'm, tr- like I'm he, trying to. I'm trying to figure out. Was he the main character? I thought he was like the side I mean, character. He was in both of them. He was the main. He's the only one you play as oh, in, in okay. Village, at least. All righty. Well, then we're going well, to scrap that one. Scrap my win. It, I mean, it was a yep. tie, anyways. It was a tie. What are you talking about? We said it literally at the exact same time. I replay that. Replay that. We can. Right. It, w- l- we're recording. That's good. That's good. We'll see. Okay. Only God knows. And this no, recording. No, we so, we will know. There's the proof next, in the pudding. The next character, Sadie Adler. Is that Resident Evil? It's not. No. This feels like another David game. This is bull crap. Resident it, it, Evil. It, the problem is, it is. Because I know that name. I'll give you. I'll give you five more seconds on it. Oh man! Ah, uh, Sadie is, Adler. Is, is that in Hellblade? No. No, I didn't think Sadie it was. Adler is from Red Dead Redemption. Oh wow! Ooh. That wasn't for me. That no, wasn't for no, no. me either. That was no, a but I was one. I was curious as to if you guys would come up with one. Is she is she if the blonde girl? Kind of, yeah. She's the one that helps out John Marston at the beginning, like one of the first main. Uh, no, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you know what? It sounds familiar. No, that was it, Bonnie. It, that was Bonnie, wasn't it? It's the guy from uh, Resident Evil Four. I was confusing him with Sad. Yeah, word. he's. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You guys ready for the next one? Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it. I guess. Bloody Mary. Oh, Bloody that's a Mary. just an urban myth. She's got to uh, be in a game. I, is is she is she in Dead by Daylight now? No. She in her, her own? Is she in her own game? Bloody Mary. She, she's in. She's in a game. I mean, it might not. Oh, uh, Fear the Ring. It's, no. Bioshock. I'll give you. I'll give you five more seconds. Well, bloody, bloody Mary. Max Payne three. Hey, Incorrect. Man. Bloody Mary. Twisted Metal. The two Twisted really? Metals. She drives the Spectre. 
In what wow. one? Uh, and I think in multiples. Let me see. Well, I know in two, it, it was a dude. Let's see here. Uh, do, do, do. Oh, no. J- Jeremy has real just, Donna. Uh, yeah. In Twisted Metal Black and in Twisted Metal Lost. I knew it. I knew it, it was black. Jeremy's showing some I don't, real Donna, I don't know Donahue what, vibes right here. What does that even mean? He knows. Okay, well, I've got a last one here um, that I think someone's going to know, but maybe I'm not sure. Let me, David. Uh, what game haven't we hit for you? Apex Legends. <laughs> Titanfall 2. Let's hear it. Um, oh, yeah, that would be a good one. Um, this side character is named Yuna. Oh, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 10. And it's 2. No. What? It's a different Yuna? It is. Different Yuna? Uh, I like how we both went to the same game, though. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. How's he going to pick Yuna when we both know that we're big Final Fantasy <laughs> fans? <laughs> um, so that's a tease. Man, Yuna. Yuna. Three. Yuna. Two. Uh, I feel like it's another one, Japanese game. Uh, uh, Yuna. From Ghost of Tsushima. Go on, she's never, the first person you meet. Never would have known that. Oh, God. That should have been mine. I, it was. I barely still remember. You just clean she's the, she, yourself. She's the one with the brother? Yeah. Like it's his head chopped off because the guy, the brother's a... Oh, complete, spoiler alert. Wow, yes, spoiler, that is. Yes, that is. Bro, brother's a complete, I was going to play that in like 15 moron. years. He is. That was one of the dumbest decisions in all of games. Like, what the F was he thinking? It wasn't wise. Not at all. It was not. It was not. Okay, so here's what we have here. I uh, three, four, five, six, seven here. I have three that you guys didn't know, one that David knew, and you knew three of them. Yeah. So I guess maybe the house, the house is the winner. If the shoe fits. It's a it's yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, or should I come up with one so we can another one so we can see if it's the house or if it's or yeah. or okay, okay. Yeah. I got I can come up with one. I can just give me a quick second. Talk amongst yourselves here. Um, hey, David. I've What's got up? I've got one for you. OK, I've got one. Which is kind of a side character, but also kind of not. You ready for the name? Well, yeah. How is that fair? Clementine. Oh, that's the Animal Walking Frost. Dead. OK. Clementine is such a good character. She's okay. such a good character. One of my team friends just opened up Pal World. There you go. Oh, look at that. I was get, I was dinky. closing down the website that I had these characters on, and an ad started popping up. It's a Zertek ad, but it has Jamaican music in it. It was very confusing. <laughs> um, that that makes uh, makes Corey the victor of this rendition of Name That Game. Um, Fun game. That was Fun great. Game. We just throw that out there. Love yeah. this game. Yeah, come up with some. I'll try to come up with some more, a little bit more obscure ones next. David, time. you got to take Not it next time, obscure. dude. You got to. I take, got it. I already have got, an idea. I you got do one. Music level music names. That is so risque. Yeah. But no, like it's that. fine. It's fine. You do a little bit more common ones, but we'll we'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, we will. I don't even know the titles of my favorite artist songs to, to Zanarkin. We, we got this there's one That's, for you okay to okay that that mm. is just it's for easy. me it's for me well okay the, the um safe room music yeah where could that be from you know we, there's some out there yeah okay casino night hey you know love saying? that one like, hey. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um well that leads us towards the end of the episode, which means we're at final thoughts, where we can make a final thought about something related or unrelated to this podcast episode. Um, Corey, you won the game. Yeah. That means you're up for your the final thought first. Okay, obviously we were talking a lot about Pal World and how it's an Xbox console exclusive, and that's a win for Xbox. Xbox had a uh, had a showcase, and they didn't show a ton of games, which I think mm-hmm. actually worked in their benefit. I think it was only four or five different games. Mm-hmm. But the one that stuck out to me was the Indiana jones the circle golden circle or something like that uh it looked fantastic you know they had harrison ford on point in terms of looks um 
you said it's done by Machine Gun? Uh, Machine Games. Yeah. Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. Uh, it looked great. First person, which seems to work. We're going to have an adventure style um, shooting, using the whip, punching. I'm I'm very excited for it. Yeah, if, you're, if people are wondering what Machine Games developed, they developed the Wolfenstein series, which is a great series of FPSs. So that um, is unexpected. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's nice. I think I think that's a huge pedigree for this game to come into. Like, hey, this more is what we've worked more on. unexpected than Playground Games, which usually does racing games, making Fable. Xbox is doing some weird stuff with their studios, but They're, it might be working. Yeah, talented people are talented. Yeah, you know we see that with Touché. something like Horizon, Killzone, and if you would have said Killzone, I would have said those people weren't even talented. And then they made Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> then they made Horizon, and then after playing Horizon, I still don't think they're that talented still, but they're talented enough for a lot. They're of way more talented really than you thought they were. Uh, more yeah. talented than I am. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I couldn't make any of that. <laughs> All righty, uh, David, you want to give your final thought? Yeah, um, mine is pretty much finally have a release date for hellblade 2 may end of may yeah so as i stated earlier hellblade 1 is on sale on steam right now it's like five bucks Mm -hmm. i still recommend it like i said earlier i'm gonna try to play it and beat it again before the other one comes out it's just it's a great story great story and hellblade hellblade 2 senua's saga (laughs) i think I think that's it. Yeah. Senua Saga. Yeah. Something like um, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fantastic. I saw that it's going. We were talking a little bit pre-show that it's going on sale, fifty dollars digital only. Mm. When there would be no physical copies. I don't know if maybe they do a collector's or limited edition that may be physical, but yeah, from what I understand, it's, I want it. it's digital only. Um, very interesting. But looking, yes, we finally have a date, and it's great. Um. My final thought is kind of, I got two points. One quick point. Leapfrogging off of uh, your Sunua's topic and the fact that it's digital only. There was an article that came out, I believe, a couple of weeks ago about Ubisoft's, uh, from Ubisoft's oh, leader of digital God. content, <laughs> basically saying that they yep. want to get gamers to a point where they feel comfortable um, not really owning their games, and then cue everyone making the joke. I, I'm completely comfortable not owning any Ubisoft <laughs> games because no one likes Ubisoft games. That's perfect. Um, yeah, uh, it's weird language. I don't know why you would say that. No one asked you to say that. Um, right. But I guess you're being truthful, so good for you. That's <laughs> um, the other thing that was a new that was news, but not a lot of people talked about that I got very hopeful about is that EA has recently said they are ending their edict that their studios have to use Frostbite to develop their engines and that they can now use any kind of development tool that they want and that they are now focusing on making Frostbite the obvious option, the first option. They want it to be the first option, but if people want to use Unity, if people want to use Unreal, that they can go ahead and do that. Um, My response to that is awesome. Hopefully we can get other games that EA develops in the future to not be in this terrible frostbite engine that is only meant for first person shooters. It's probably too late for Madden. I don't see them redoing their stuff and in a new engine now, um, which means it's also probably too late for NCAA because I'm assuming they also started developing the the NCAA football game in the frostbite engine as well, because it's been in development for maybe two and a half, three years, but maybe hopefully they can pivot and other, other, other studios will pivot into not having to use frostbite and the people that i give credit to for helping spearhead that is respawn with apex and jedi because i believe they've been using the source engine which is the engine that valve developed so they have not been using frostbite and they've been creating top tier best-selling games without having to use that terrible terribly handicapped engine so I think that EA was finally awoken to, wait a minute, we can make money and people can use different tools. And the cost savings on not having to pay for licenses doesn't beat out people having, or us releasing terrible games and lowering our, our, our dollar-making potential. So um, I think that's great news. We'll see how it, how it turns out for them, though. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
Uh, yeah, that is it for Level 95 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you liked what you heard, please follow the podcast on the socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram. You can find us there. And also on YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast. Um, if you want to support the podcast, a little bit of dollars, there's a couple of ways you could do that. One is uh, through merch. We got, you know, the stickers I've mentioned before. We've got like things like phone cases. We've also got like shirts and stuff, obviously. Check that out. Another way is to join our Patreon. Uh, we have a $2, a $5, and a $7 tier. Um, all, all of those offering little bits of goodies and extras uh, as far as like, you know, a first look at content, getting the podcast show earlier than regular release and different stuff like that. So if you want to do that, check it out. Links will be available for that as well. Uh, that is it for me, fellas. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Please. Goodbye. All right. That is it. We will catch you on the next level.